shifter. We gotta fix that. Welcome to the shifter, everybody. Um, I'm Will, this is Matt, and first off, back in studio doing the shifter. How about that? Yeah. Kind of, um, sort of. <laughs> yeah, kind of, sort of. This isn't really an episode as much. We're not necessarily talking about headlines or projecting the future. We actually, we're having a State of the Union. This is a NASCAR State of the Union. Where are we at as a sport? Are we moving in the right direction? Um, and we'll evaluate the season thus far. So this is unscripted. We're just kind of going to see where this goes. So Matt... Uh, you've obviously been able to follow the race, uh, the actual racing product on a given Sunday a little bit more than I have this year. So I just want you, out of, on a scale of 1 to 10, across the board, rate the racing product. Okay. So we are – I'm going to rate it by track type, actually, and then I'm going to give an overall rating. Because okay. I think a mile and a half is right at 10. Like, they're as good as they can be. They're, they might – you can argue better than the Jim Foyer. I say they're right on par with it. But, like, when you go to tracks like Kansas and Charlotte, you know you're going to get an all-time race. It's just – that's just the fact right now. Um, At, like, the mile concrete tracks like Nashville and Dover, for example, I think we're at, like, a solid seven. The racing at Dover especially is a lot better than it was in the Gen 6, which is weird uh, because the car is not good on the short tracks because the short tracks are – Why do we still have Ronnie James? Not Ronnie James. We recorded a video about Ronnie James. Why do we still have Isaiah Thomas? We'll, We'll just put my baby here. Your what? My, um, uh, my, my. Guys, he baby. cried when he found out Tony Stewart got a woman pregnant. Yeah, but I did. he wasn't totally very happy for him. But um, short track racing is a two. It's bad. It's real bad. Um, they can't pass. Uh, Iowa was good, though. I, whatever Iowa did with the surface, it worked. I wish we could do that everywhere, but we can't. Uh, Richmond is a fun strategy race, even though a lot of people hate it. But you can't pass there either. Um. Unless you have a uh, 50 lap fresh tires in the guy in front of you, um, which we'll see when we go to Richmond in here in about 10 days. But um, also, Martinsville is probably the worst track on the schedule. It really sucks. Bristol, it, you can't break Bristol completely, but as long as it has the tire that it had in the spring, it'll be fine. But still, short track racing is bad. Now, I'm going to rate super speedways here. If you would have asked me this last year, I would have given them an eight. This year, there are five. While the racing is good at the end, people are saving gas the entire race. They need to figure out a way to fix that if they can. Road courses are about a five as well. We have some good road course races like the Indy Road Course last year. And then we have some races like Watkins Glen last year where they run in a straight line. And I really hope they don't do that at Watkins Glen. And because of the tire, I think that can help with that. They're bringing a new tire to Watkins Glen, which is supposed to show a lot more wear. And I think if they can bring that to all the road courses, they will be better. And then I want to just talk about Two Mile Plus, so I'm going to kind of group in Indy, Pocono, Michigan. I think Michigan and Pocono are actually pretty good. Indy was kind of a letdown, but we we expected it. But I think to the casual fan, it was a letdown. So I'm going to give these a six because I think they have improved Pocono and Michigan. But I think Indy was even almost a step down from the Gen 6. So overall, if I had to rate where NASCAR is on a pure racing product scale right now, I'm going to give them a seven because I think... In some places, the next gen's made it better, but in some places, it made it worse. So I think we're almost in about the same spot in racing product if you look at the whole thing. Maybe slightly better. Um, I tend to agree. Um, Super Speedway Racing, I think... uh, Actually, I'll I'll go ahead and say Super Speedway Racing and Short Track Racing being bad is very much kneecapping the growth of this sport. And that's very unfortunate because I think we are primed as a sport to grow. We talk about the new media deals. We talk about... Um, having younger, more savvy people, like uh, understanding how to sort of capture uh, the internet market. um, Those should be the races that are just like, put them on the schedule. And then, yeah, you know, you're just going to be able to sit people down in front of them and show them like, Hey, this is what NASCAR is. And then go from there. So the fact that we can't do that anymore and we kind of have to explain to like, I mean, we've both been in this situation with people we're trying to introduce the sport to where you try and put them in front of a short track or super speedway and you go like, yeah, you know, this, these types of tracks used to be really cool and, and uh, they used to be the best races, but now due to like, you can't get into specifics with talking like to a casual fan. So you just like, Oh, well they're not as good anymore, but they still might be good. And then they never are good. 
Um, but it's so weird though, because if you want to take them to a race, there is a super speedway, and it's the one that everybody thought was gonna be terrible. It's Atlanta. You yeah, want to take a first to do it first NASCAR race, you take them to Atlanta. Exactly, and yeah, Atlanta still has the fuel saving problem, especially in the Xfinity series. But we're actually not even talking about the Xfinity series because talk about the racing product there. It's nine in the Cup series. Nine, it's nine. Um, trucks like a five, but we're not gonna talk about that. So. There are just some things that I don't know that we will be able to fix. I think the largest overarching issue is that these cars are stuck to the ground. There is no um, there's no airflow from under the cars, and that is why we still have problems passing at the bigger tracks. Um, the good thing is, though, these cars have been very good about uh, being able to run in multiple lines. So that's why you talk about the mile and a half racing being so good. Um, in the Gen 4, a lot of times the, it was more about running the same line as someone and then moving them out of it. This, uh, this new car has been more about uh, finding different lines that work. And both racing, uh, both forms of racing, in my opinion, are entertaining. If we could maybe get these cars off the ground a little bit and create... A little bit of that instability when a car gets behind another, um, this. then this would the get even better. Off the ground. And I mean, this this car was also bashed for being too close to the ground. So yeah. Uh, point is, um, I think the racing product everywhere but the short tracks and super speedways is fine. Um, I think the problem with super speedways actually th- this is just a catch-all issue. Um, it's the tires. Um, if the tires would just outlast the fuel, we would not have a problem. I mean, if we got a Daytona back that had tire wear and handling, that was elite Daytona. And you might say, like, oh, but the pack races draw crowds. We got pack races with the Gen 4, and especially the package like when you had, like, the Wicker Bill in, yeah. you know, 99 to, or 2000 to 2002. Cole watched the 2001 EA Sports 500. Like, that's pack racing right there. And guess what? That was Talladega, and they had handling issues. So, um, yeah, if we could just get a tire that wears, you talk about the tire they brought to Bristol, like, Maybe we don't need it to quite that extent, um, but That's still cool though. Yeah, uh, and now I also understand that you want to have a tire that holds up on the super speedways for safety reasons. But I also would then pose the question to you: is like maybe we discourage the pack racing a little bit and get the cars a little bit farther apart. But um, I think we're in an okay spot. Got to figure out the short tracks and the super speedways. Um, now. The sport is postured in a media sense, the best it's been in a decade. Um, because we had good racing, say, like, 2012. Um, but we but were just massively was declining. Because, well, ESPN produc- production took a step back, and they stopped covering it. But now I think with how the sports media landscape works, you don't have to be on ESPN every nope. single day. You can go, like, NASCAR getting coverage on the Pat McAfee show is so much more important than them getting coverage on SportsCenter now. That's Absolutely. how much it's changed. And before you run to the comments, yes, we know Pat McAfee show is on ESPN. Don't you sit here and try and pretend me as though his coverage is the same. But it started before that. Yeah, but, it started before that. But also just it's a completely different entity. Yeah. Um, and then also, like, we have a Bleacher Report deal now. Bleacher Report's yep. constantly. And then we have guys like Icy Vert. Um, that are constantly, <laughs> <laughs> constantly like, you know, they're f- good friends with guys like Roger Cruz and Carson Hosovar, and it's really getting the younger guys' exposure, which is really big for the sport. Because the guy in the truck series like Roger Cruz having the popularity that he does already is so huge because you can have a new fan that can rise all the way up to the ranks with him because, yes, he will be a Cup Series driver one day. Just look at the improvements he's made already. But, again, I think we're uh, really good in the media sense, but at a leadership, it's kind of questionable with this charter stuff. Um, so a lot of people probably don't know this because, uh, actually we've done a fairly decent job of keeping this thing under wraps, but it's funny cause we have had drivers be pretty vocal about this. Um, we, we've had a lot of sports the last few years that have had CBA agreements and, uh, like we had the MLB lockout just a few years ago. Uh, people don't realize we're bordering on a similar situation in NASCAR where the, uh, drivers and teams cannot come to agreement, uh, an agreement with, uh, the sanctioning body being NASCAR, um, now w- this will get figured out. I don't see a catastrophic situation where, you know, we don't have racing because let's be real here. Um, these entities mutually need each other in the immediate future. We cannot take a pause as a sport that would, I don't want to speak in hyperbole because I could sit here and say, Oh, that'll kill the sport. It kill might the growth, the new growth that we've had for sure. Probably. Absolutely. So, um, I don't know what direction we're headed. Um, I, I, I know that, um, a lot of this comes from the fact that, uh, the teams and drivers 
want a, a greater revenue split uh, with uh, effectively the league. Um, and I think they deserve it. Um, so we have that going on. Also talking about just uh, we haven't seen much development in the growth of the next gen car for this reason, too, because that's been a part of the negotiation uh, as far as what changes we can and can't make. Are we adding horsepower? Are we like this, that, and third? Um, so uh, the teams and uh, NASCAR are at an impasse, impasse, but <laughs> we, we will get this figured out, hopefully. Uh, we have to. So that's all we're going to talk about it because I have faith. I don't want to cause any sort of uh, – I don't want to do any fear-mongering here. Um, I do want to go back to one more thing about media before we kind of end this mm. thing off here because, guys, this isn't going to be your 40-minute shifter. Mm -hmm. But um, with uh, also with the new TV deal, I think it will help NASCAR also get more households with the kind of the streaming platforms kind of joining in and stuff like that, less Fox races. Um but uh, I think TNT is going to be a wonderful partner like they should continue to be in another sport. Please. Please. But um, And then also ending the season on NBC is great. I, the only thing I kind of wish they would have done is a rotating Daytona 500. Yep. But I, between NBC and Fox, because I understand you can't have that race on TNT. But mm -hmm. I think that will be good for the sport, and I think it will only add to the growth. But if we have that lockout, it might hurt that. But I don't think it will end NASCAR as a whole. No, um, and so now this last little bit is we're going to finally get a little bit optimistic because also we just barely touched on it. Uh, NASCAR's issues with Fox and their level of production being so drastically low has also kneecapped the sport because the sport needs to be prevented the, uh, presented the way that NBC does, and for half the season the uh, the sport is not – it's objectively not presented well, which is unfortunate because of the talented booth and people they have working there. Um, we just need some slight tweaks over there on Fox, but I think the sport as a whole, pending uh, the charter agreement and pending, you know, because the changes, they're working on changes to the short track package. Yeah. And the tires. And, and they've tried a couple things that have worked. And like Richmond, when we come back in 10 days, we're going to have an option tire. That's something that we've never had for a points paying NASCAR race. So that's going to be interesting. So, and I think uh, this is just so optimistic compared to where we were circa 2016, where it felt like every change was never in the favor of the fans or the drivers. It was just all all for the sake of saving money. And finally, I don't think that the people in charge are solely, solely focused on saving money because I think they realized over the last few years they needed to be focused on saving the sport and getting eyes back on it. Uh, so as far as the next-gen car goes, I like it. Um, need to make some tweaks, but uh, it's a project. Find a way to also, time. like, when you blow a tire, you don't have to go, like, four laps down. Like, I know we're still working on that, but... That, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. So that being said, um, this has been one of the most drama-filled, action-packed years of NASCAR racing we've ever seen. Any year where the short tracks and super speedways have been bad. We've had two of the closest, and if you got the Xfinity Series, three of the closest finishes in NASCAR history. We've had a, uh, a lot of uh, fights. We've had drama. Like th There has been everything you could possibly Big ask. Big names for. outside the playoffs right now. Exactly. Like we, we have, It's an intriguing product. Guys, that we right, have to capitalize on. Right now, I know we t we're not getting into about the playoffs on the show, but right now, if you just want to watch from a pure sports perspective, we have four races into the NASCAR playoffs, and we have five drivers fighting for four spots, and they're all within a race of each other on points. And that's not to add in that any of the drivers below them, including a two-time champion that needs to win to make it, if they win, it blows up everything. So that being said, this has been our little State of the Union, talking about, you know, just... Do we think the sport's in a good place? Our answer, mostly yes. And where do we think it's going in the right direction? Also, mostly Maybe. yes. Maybe. Mostly yes. Yeah. Uh, so that being said, we thank you for watching. The Shifter will resume in its traditional form, uh, potentially in studio. Uh, but the Shifter will resume in its traditional form uh, after the Olympic One break. One of the traditional forms. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> but that being said, as always, I've been Will. And I might have been Matt. You have been. I, uh, I checked. Yeah. Okay. Good. Name tag. Oh, I've lost it. And this has been an unsponsored episode of The Shifter. That's right. You guys aren't getting shouted out today. Oh, Milan, Bria, Terrell, uh, the, 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 Ken, uh, the, the, the Ant. Thank you for watching.
I don't have a shifter. We gotta fix that.